Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my Java Enterprise tutorial. This is going to be a multi-part tutorial series, and in this first part, I'm going to give you a rough overview of servlets, Java server pages, databases, and a whole bunch of other different things. If you don't know how to set all this stuff up, in the description, I have a link to an installation video that you should definitely watch and set up before you watch this video. Like always, all the code is available in the description underneath the video, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so everything that I do here is going to be the same on Windows as well as on Macintosh and based off of the couple changes that I covered in the installation video. One thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need this for the database and you need to go to this URL right here and what we're going to need is the MySQL connector and we're going to use that to connect to a database and of course you just go and pick whatever operating system you have and download that and you're going to be using it later on in the tutorial. I chose to use Eclipse in this video. You can use whatever you want everything's going to be the same but if you're using eclipse you're going to want to first off whenever you open up eclipse go to help and welcome and then you're going to see this pop up and you're going to click right here where it says create a new java ee web project whenever you do it's going to ask you what you want the project to be named and i am just going to call this jee tut one and then you're going to want to make sure that you have the proper version of tomcat once again covered in the installation video and everything else here is perfectly fine and then you're going to click on next leave everything exactly the way that it is and click on next again everything exactly as we have it before and just click on finish whenever you do all of that all of these guys are going to automatically be created for you your document root is going to be where all of your files are going to be stored and the other other important guy here is going to be the web INF folder and this is where you're going to be storing files that you don't want to be accessible on the web such as data files and the web XML file Java classes and servlets and the very first thing we're going to do is come in here and create a servlet so all you need to do is right click on that and go new and then come down here to servlet and click on that and basically servlets are just going to make it easy to, to develop web-based applications because they provide access to things such as databases and other such which you're going to see later on and servlets of course run on the server and they're going to process data for dynamic web pages and if you're wondering where they're going to be stored well let me just first off create one first I'm going to create a Java package and you should use something that you own so for example I'm going to use here my website and this is just going to help us avoid any conflicts and then a class name and I'm just going to call this samp servlet and leave everything else there the same and click on next and and we got this guy right here just click on next leave everything exactly as we have we're going to want to generate a do get and a do post so just make sure those are selected exactly as I have here and click on finish and if you're wondering where this servlet is actually created if you come over here where it says deployment descriptor and then down here to servlets you can see there's sample servlet or if you can't see it there it is a little bit bigger now I'll get more into this later but it's important to understand that JSP apps use the MVC pattern where each part should largely function on their own and if one part changes it shouldn't have dramatic effects on the other and the specifics of what MVC is is there's the model which is just the Java code that accesses and processes your data the view which is going to be the interface the user sees and then finally the controller which is going to serve as a communicator between the model and view okay so more on that as we continue now the only library I'm going to add here that is not automatically put in is going to be print writer and that's just going to allow us to send HTML or XML to our clients and you just go Java IO and print writer exactly like that now in regards to what all this other stuff is here these are obviously the libraries that we need to be able to have this application work this guy right here is going to match up our servlet with a URL that we will be able to load in our browser HTTP servlet is just going to provide different methods for handling get and post requests and managing required resources for everything to run this serial ID that we have here is just going to be used to maintain compatibility between different versions of our classes and it's also a way to make sure that code is using the same versions of different classes and more specifically serializing is going to involve converting objects into a form that can be stored or transmitted and like I said as we continue we'll get more into this this is obviously the constructor do get is going to be used by the servlet to handle git requests and then you have these guys right here HTTP 
servlet request is going to hold requests from the users, such as form data, as we'll see. And then the servlet response is what is going to be sent back to the user. Now with do get, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of this line of code. And instead, I'm going to refer all of my calls to to get down to the do post method. And to do so, you just go do post and then you pass in the request as well as the response that was sent to this method. Now we'll get down into do post and we're going to do the opposite of what we did right here. And this is all the, the default stuff that was put inside of here. Very first thing I want to do is I want to define that I want to send HTML to my browser. This is the very first thing you should always do. And this must be set before you go and create your print writer so that we know what type of data will be written. So we're going to come in and we're going to say text and forward slash HTML. Then we're going to create our print writer, which is going to allow us to write out text as well as HTML to the screen. And I'm just going to call this out and you go response and get writer to create that. Then there could be some potential problems. So we're going to surround this with a try block and then we just go out and print line. And then let's just go and throw some HTML out on the screen. So I'm just going to throw the tags directly inside here. There's different ways of doing this. I'm just trying to keep this very simple and then close off that H3 tag. And then I'm going to come down here and I will say finally, and then close our print writer. Now what we need to do is set up our server and I covered this in the um, installation video, but basically down here, you're going to see our servers and you can click on this guy. If it, by the way, says no servers are available, you're going to need to click on that link and then select the installed Tomcat version that you're using. But what I want to do now is add my servlet to this. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on the server and I'm going to go right click and then click on add and remove. And whenever you do that, this is going to pop up. You're going to go and get whatever you're currently working with. Click on add and then click on finish. And it's going to give you this error message. Just click on OK. and Everything's going to work automatically. Then what you're going to want to do is you want to make sure that your server XML file has been updated to the change that you just made. And that guy is going to be over here where it has servers, so server XML. And then you're just going to scroll way down to the very bottom of the screen and make sure that that says JEE1, which it does, or JEE TUT1, which it does. Close that. You're not going to need it again. Make sure this is saved. Then you can come down here, make sure the server is selected, and then you can go and restart it just by clicking over here. And a whole bunch of stuff's going to pop up. And then if you go to this specific URL and local host and make sure everything is exactly the same, you'll see that our servlet is up and running. There you go. You just created a working servlet. Now we're going to create our first Java server page, and then we'll be able to, you know, communicate between the server as well as back and forth in the browser and then eventually into a database. So to do that, just right click on this guy, new, come down here where it says JSP file. This is going to open up and we are going to just call this index.jsp. Click on next. It's going to go into your web content folder. That's what that's saying right there. Okay, click on next. Leave this as HTML5. That's fine. I'm not going to do anything fancy though. And then this guy's going to pop up. And we can come in here and we can change the title on this if we would like to testing JSP. And then I'm going to do a simple example and then one that's a little bit more complicated. So just come in here and I'm going to go H3. And you can just put your HTML inside of here right along with your Java code. Everything's going to work fine. So I'm going to say enter some info. And then we will just go and get some information from our user. And we're going to use a form to do that. So I'm going to go form action is equal to. And I'm going to call this process info. That's going to be the name of another servlet that I create here in a minute. And I'm using the method of post. And I trust you know what that is. And that creates our form. And then I'm going to create a label. I'm going to keep the HTML as simple for now. Maybe later on I'm going to get more complicated into it. So we're going to create our label. And then we're going to give the user the option to input some information. And that, of course, is just going to be treated as basic text. And we're going to give it the name of name. And then I could throw a break statement inside of here. And then I can also go, I obviously need a way for them to submit that information. So create a submit button and give it the value of send. 
and close that off. So that is very, very simple. And now what we need to do is create process info. So once again, we're gonna come up here to our main application and we're gonna right click and we're gonna create another servlet. This guy pops up, I'm gonna name this oh, Java package first. I'm gonna go com new think tank and the class name is going to be process info and click on next. Everything here is perfectly fine, next, and everything here is perfectly fine. Click on finish. All right, so with this guy, and if it looks a little bit different, like you have comments all over the place, that's because I deleted the comments, and then I also spaced things a little bit different, okay? So everything else is the same. So we don't need to import any libraries here. Once again, this is just going to be what you call inside of the browser. There's the constructor, there's do get, which refers everything to do post, and then we get down to do post, which is where we are going to actually do some stuff. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is we are going to define the URL where we're gonna send all of our data, which is gonna be a JSP file. And that's just going to be display info.jsp. Then what we need to do is get the data that was entered into the index.jsp file and store that. And I'm just gonna call this user's name. And how you get it is you call request get parameter, and then the specific name that you gave it, which was just name. If you remember, here it is, and see, name, right there. That's what we're getting. After that, what I wanna do is store this so that we will be able to send it to the display info file or that we're going to display on the browser. So how you do that is you go set attribute, and I'm gonna call this user's name, and user's name is what we just gave it. And I'll do this with a database here in a moment. And then we're going to pass this to our URL. And how we do that is we go get servlet context. And then on the next line, we go get request dispatcher. And that is going to be our URL that we're going to be passing everything to. And then we say forward and pass our request as well as our response. And now to process that, we actually have to create the display info. So I'm just gonna copy that, jump over here, right click on this, go new and create a new JSP file. This guy's gonna pop up and I'm just gonna paste in display info.jsp, click on next. Goes in the web content folder, of course. HTML5 and click on finish. And then we can come in and what do we wanna call this? I don't know, let's just be happy and say hello. And then down in the bottom section or the body section, I'm gonna say hello. And then to actually get that information that was passed over to this, I just re refer to its name with a dollar sign and our curly brackets on the outside. And we could go and throw a break statement in there if we would like and save it. And then we can come down here to Tomcat, make sure we have the server selected, come over here where the little green button is, click on that just to make sure everything is loaded right. And then we're gonna to go to our index file. So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna go index.jsp, click on enter, enter some information, and I can just come in, type my name in, and click on send, and it says hello Derek, okay? So there, we passed some information. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this fancy guy you downloaded at the beginning of the tutorial and make all this work with databases. So you're going to find this jar file wherever you had it stored and you're gonna get it and you are going to copy it. Works the same on Windows as well as Mac. Then you're gonna go into web content and the library file here and paste. And now you have the jar file inside of there. Now you're either gonna open up your terminal or your command line and you're gonna type in mysql-u root-p and if you don't have the root user already set up, I'll show you how to do that if this is the very first time you're using MySQL. If not, then you will see this whenever you enter your password. If you are updating the root, you're gonna type in update MySQL user, exactly everything that you see here, except you're gonna put in your new password because whenever you first install MySQL, the root doesn't have a set password. And then you're going to have where user is root, okay? So that's how you set up MySQL for the very first time whenever you first start using it. And then you're gonna hit enter and you're gonna enter a password. Now what we need to do is go and set up our database. So I'm gonna go create database and I'm gonna just call this test one to keep it simple. 
then you need to say that you want to use the database you just created. So you just type in use in the database name. Then we have to go and create the table that's gonna store all the information. Then to create your table, you're gonna type in everything I have here, or if you want the code, it's in the description and it's free. I don't ask for emails or anything. You just get the text file and get it. So here is where we're gonna create all that. And these are just going to be basically strings that we're gonna store. And then this is going to be an auto-generated customer ID. So just after you enter all that, hit enter. Then after you do that, you're gonna to wanna to create a user that is just specific to this database. And to do so, create user, whatever the user's name is, localhost, and then identified by, and this is going to be the password. This is just a default junk password that I use in all my tutorials. Please don't use turtle dove as your password because I use that in all my tutorials and um, it might be a common thing that some people do, so don't do that. You can see here I went and checked to see if the user was created and indeed they were. You are then going to want to grant privileges to this new user with the test one database that you went and just created and more specifically the customer part here. And that is how you do that. And then you hit enter. And now your database is all set up. And to leave that, you just type in quit and you are done. Now what I'm gonna do is create a Java bean that's going to allow me to go and pass customer data. So I'm just gonna come in here and go new and I, I'm gonna click on class, wherever class is, there it is. And the name for this is just going to be customer. And I don't want anything else here selected. And then I can click on finish. Now inside of this guy, what we're going to need, if we, it's officially going to be a Java bean, one thing that we're going to need is everything is going to have to be marked as private. So I'm gonna have first name and I'm gonna do the same for last name and telephone number. So last name and phone, I'll just keep everything a string. Another thing we're going to need is getters and setters for all of these and Eclipse makes this easy. You just put your mouse over this and it gives you the option to create getters and setters. So just click on that. That's fine and click on OK. And then we can do that for all these other ones too. So create all those, click on OK and then do one for phone. And there we go. Click on OK. All right. So we have all those set. Another thing that we must do for this to be a Java bean is you need to have a constructor that does not receive any attributes. So let's go and create that. And I'm gonna go this, which is a reference to the object that we don't know its name, which I'm sure if you're watching this tutorial, you've seen in Java tutorials. If not, I am quite confused. So let's see, uh, let's go down here and last name and phone. So that's gonna give us all our default values. And then we're also going to need a proper constructor. So come down here and then we're gonna go string F name and string last name and then finally string and phone. And then this will just be changed to the attribute values that are passed into it. Whoops, last name and then have this be phone. And then the last thing we need to do is come up here and import Java IO serializable and then come down here to our class and go implements serializable and there you go now you have a Java bean and we're gonna have to add a serial ID to this and I can just go add default serial ID that's fine and I already talked about what the purpose of that is all right so let's save that here we are back in our process info Java file and I want to make sure no I didn't do it so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to be working with the database. So I need to import Java SQL dot star. And that's going to give me access to all that. And then I'm going to do a very simple uh, function down here that's going to allow us to access our database and update it. I'm going to do more secure things later on in the tutorial, but I just, I just want to keep this nice and simple. So I'm going to go call this protected void and update DB. And it's going to receive a string, which is going to be for our first name and another string, which is going to be for our last name. And then finally, a string that's going to deal with telephone numbers. And let's put these down here so you can actually see them. And there we go. All right. So very first thing we're going to need to do is get the ability to connect to our database. And how we do that is we go connection and we already have this guy over here, the connector installed in the lib folder. Make sure it's there. If it's not there, it's not going to work. All right. So 
there's going to be our database connection. Again, we can have issues here, so I'm going to surround this with a try block. And this is everything that we're going to need to define to be able to connect to our database. So we're going to go class for name, com, and mysql.cj.jdbc.driver. After that, we're going to define a URL here for our database. So we're going to say jdbc colon mysql colon forward slash local host forward slash and the name of our database, which is test one. Then we're going to put inside of here the username for the database that we created. So that was db admin. Again, we're going to do the same for our password. And that was turtle dove. Then I'm going to use this guy to issue queries to the database. So this is driver manager git connection and then pass in URL as well as the username as well as our password. After we do that, I'm going to use statement to send queries to the database. So I'm just call that S and you go connection create statement and then I'm going to create my query. So you go string, and I'm just going to call this query equal to, and I have a MySQL tutorial if you don't know how to use MySQL, into customer. Make sure you have spaces and everything. If you have any errors here, just go copy and paste the code. And there is all the code for entering the first name, last name, telephone number, and then the customer ID. So make sure this has to be exactly the same. So make sure that your spaces and everything are exactly the way that they should be. I'm going to come down here and just get rid of these errors. I'm going to say catch class not found exception E. And then we can just print that out, print stack trace. And then we're going to do the same for SQL exception. So SQL. And everything else there is perfectly fine. And you can see all the errors went away. And then finally, we can issue our, our uh, query by going S and execute update and then pass the query inside of it. Okay, so there you go. That is going to update our database. Now I'm going to jump over into the index.jsp file and update this information. So I'm going to have this still be process info, just like we did before. Everything here is going to be exactly the same. I'm going to change this to first name, and then I will change this also to F name or first name. Go get this guy, and we're going to need three of these. So this is going to be last name, change this to L name, and then change this to phone, and then change this to phone. Everything else can be exactly the same, so we're going to save that. Jump back over into process info and we can scroll up here and then we're going to have to change a couple things inside of here. I'm going to need three of these guys now. Display info is going to stay exactly the same. So I'm going to go into the string part right here. Select this, change this into F name and then change this into F name. And we're going to need to do one for the last name and the phone, of course. So we're just getting that information from the index file and last name and phone and then change this to last name and change this to phone. Then what we're going to do is instead of uh, passing the username back, we're actually going to use this customer Java bean we created here and pass that over so we can look at that. But first we want to update our database so we'll call update database and then pass in f name and i'll show you that that worked also phone so that's going to update our database then we're going to create a customer object let's just call this cust is equal to new customer and then pass in f name and last name and phone and there we go that will update the database then to pass a entire object over, we're going to still use set attributes. We're going to change this, however, to CUST, and then we'll pass the customer inside of there. And we'll be able to access that entire object. And everything else stays exactly the same. So we will save that. And then we will go into display info. A couple changes we need to make here. Let's change the title of this to thank you. Oh, let's go. You know what? Just leave that. Hello. 
and I'll change the body inside of here. So I'll say H3 and thank you for the info. And then let's get rid of that. And instead I'm going to put a label inside of here. So I'll say label and just keep it simple again, first name. After that, I want the name to display so I can just refer to the customer object that we created. So there is that guy. And then we can throw a break statement inside of there. And we're gonna do that for all the other data as well. So here is last name, and then just change this to L name, and then phone, and then phone. So you can see that object was actually passed inside of there. Let's save that guy. Go over to the servers, just make sure that everything is loaded. Let's just click on the little green button and I don't see any errors popping up all over the place. Everything looks good. Otherwise the console would have opened up. I loaded up the index.jsp file. Here is the URL, just like I had before. And there I entered my name as well as a fake telephone number. Click on send. Thank you for the info. And you can see it showed first name, last name, and phone number. Now we just have to check if the database was updated. We can go into our database. We're just gonna use, uh, or type in use test one, database changed. Then type in select and star from customer. And you can see there is my name, my telephone number, and so forth and so on. All right, so there you go, guys. There was a crash course in Java Enterprise Edition. More tutorials are going to follow as long as this tutorial is watched by somebody. Enjoyed making it. Hope you enjoyed watching it. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.